in our ministries. It will restore everything we lost in Adam. Think about it. If God can keep you free from sin in one day, he can do it in the following day. He can do it for a whole week. He can do it every day, every day, one day at a time. If God can keep you strong and healthy one day, he can do it two days, right? He can do it seven days in the week. He can do it the rest of your life. At least he said, I will put none of these diseases upon you, which have brought upon the Egyptians. I am Jehovah Rapha. I am the Lord that healeth thee. You are healed in Jesus' name. Let's come to Romans chapter 8. Divine nature. Romans chapter 8. We're reading from verse 29. For whom he did for no, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. That's God's intention. That's God's plan. That's God's promise to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the first among many brethren so that I will be like him, you will be like him, we shall be like him in Jesus' name. Uh, look at Second Corinthians chapter 6. Second Corinthians chapter 6. We're reading from verse 16. And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? He talks about the temple of God and he's talking about you. That you are now the temple of God. For ye are the temple of the living God. Why don't we read that in a personal way? For I am the temple of the living God. I'll come back to that verse, but let me remind you. The ark of God in the Old Testament, under the Old Covenant, representing the presence of God, was taken by the Philistines. And they put that ark of God in their temple. And there was the idol of those people of Ashdod. What's the name of that idol? Dagon. And no high priest was there. And no priest was there. Just the ark. The following morning, that Dagon fell on the ground. God lives on the inside of you. Accept it. Accept it appropriate it and tell the Lord the ark was there and Dagon fell. You live inside me, every Dagon will fall. <laughs> and then the following day, they set up again that Dagon. And the following day, when they woke up, the head of Dagon was cut off. The arms were cut off. The legs were cut off. Dagon was finished. And if God lives inside you, you must understand it. You must acknowledge it. You must aspire that the presence of God inside you, Dagon must fall. And you must ask the Lord, I appropriate this. You live beside me. Greater is he that lives in you than he who lives in the world. You begin to have new experiences. Everywhere you go, when you get near, you come now to the new covenant. And Peter was walking by the street. And sick people, maimed people, 
paralyzed people, demonized people, mad people, they brought them just for the shadow of Peter to come over them. What happened? I said, what happened? They were healed, they were delivered. The Holy Ghost in Peter is the same as the Holy Ghost in you. When sick people get near you, before you even lay hands on them, they will get well. Acknowledge it. Accept it. Ask that the Lord will do it in your life. Activate it. Let it work. It will work. Brother, I said it will work. Sister, it will work. Let's come back now to Second Corinthians chapter 6, the latter part of verse 16. As God has said, I will dwell in them. I will dwell in them. He will dwell in you. If the spirit that raised up Jesus Christ from the dead dwell in a mortal body, he that raised him from the dead will quicken your mortal body. And even, even now, even now, he will quicken your mortal body in Jesus' name. Everything you are supposed to do, you will do. You will not say, I'm down today. No, you are now up. You will not say, I am sick. You will be well in Jesus' name. By his stripes, we're healed. But Jesus is not coming back to bear stripes all over again. Jesus is not coming back every time sickness knocks at the door that he will be beating again. Those same stripes as we appropriate, as we accept, you are well in Jesus' name. Verse 17, we have for come out from among them. What does that mean? It doesn't mean something physical. Come out from among them. Unbelievers live where we live. And we live where the unbelievers live. And we're not saying, okay, I will not go home tonight. I will not stay in that house. I am coming out because they are there. No, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Anywhere you are, it is your father's land. Come out from among them. It means come out of their way of thinking. Come out of their opinion. Come out of their superstition. Come out of their corruption. Come out from their ideologies. Don't think like they think. And don't talk like they talk. I come out. Wherefore come out from among them. And be ye separate, says the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and my daughters. Tell me. Says the Lord Almighty. Look up here. What if the president of a great country, whatever country you think about as great, America, or the prime minister in Europe, in the UK, or any other country, says he now adopts you as his own son, as his own daughter. And he has, because he's president, because he's king, he has the greatest of all facilities to take care of you mentally, physically, and in every way. And he says, now you are my son. You'll walk in freedom. You'll walk in dominion. 
you'll walk in confidence and you will go about you say things are different now you will not be thinking of what happened yesterday but now you are the son and the daughter of the greatest human person on earth but look at this and i will be a father unto you and ye shall be my my sons and my daughters tell me the final words there says the lord almighty the almighty calls you his own son the almighty god in heaven calls you his own daughter things are different now and the power of that new nature will walk in your life in jesus name second corinthians chapter 3 verse 18 second corinthians chapter 3 i'm reading from verse 18 but we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory even as by the spirit of the lord you understand that verse it says we all one by one you stand before christ and you look at the life of christ no sin no sickness no evil no oppression no defeat you stand before that image of christ and you are looking at christ you are not looking at human being you're not looking at even yourself what you were last week what you were before you're looking and gazing upon the glory of the lord and it says without you doing any other thing looking at christ looking at christ the also the finish of your faith looking at christ it says you are being changed to the same image you need to understand that one you are being changed to the same image you see from shame to shame from weakness to weakness from oppression to oppression from crying to crying from regret to regret things are different now change into the same image from glory to glory as by the spirit of the lord who is that talking about i said who is that talking about talking about you it will be done in jesus name look at colossians chapter 3 reading from verse 1 if ye then be risen with christ if ye then be risen with christ remember we crucified with him remember we die with him remember we are buried with him remember now we rise with him let me remind you before jesus died judas could betray him the pharisees could take hold of him the soldiers could nail him to the cross and then he died but that wasn't the end of the story the end of your story has not come and then he rose do you know the difference between the risen christ and the christ who lived on earth before he was crucified now he could go through the door without even touching the door now the pharisees could not touch him anymore and they could not take him anymore and do what they used to do and it says now you are identified with christ and you are risen with christ seek those things which are above where christ sits on the right hand of god 
set your affection, your concentration, your focus, your love, your very heart, set your affection on things above and not things, not on things on the earth. If you think too much of things on the earth, you'll be asleep. If you think too much of the things on the earth, you'll be powerless. You're thinking of this, you're thinking of this, you're thinking of that. Think of things on high, for ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Ye are dead. The old life is dead. Are you here, my people? And your life, tell me, is heat, go on. With Christ, go on in God. You are traveling somewhere. And because of that, you kept the money that you have currency with a trusted person. Hiding that money with him. When I come back, I'll have the money. Or maybe his clothes. You gave it to him. You trust him. And before, now when you come back and you say, my trusted friend, what is the money I give you? He said, the snake has swallowed it. You believe that? You are going to accept that? He said, the termites have eaten the money. You accept that one? Tell me, your life that is hid was Christ in God. My life. I said my life is hid with Christ in God. Will termites eat up your life? Will snakes swallow up your life? Will the demons swallow up your life? That life will be ever fresh, ever healthy, ever sound. He will preserve your life. It says, for ye are dead, and your life is seen with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Point number three now, a progress through focus on his displayed nature. Christ displayed his nature when he was here. Before the disciples, he, he disclosed his nature. He demonstrated his nature. And now we are going to make progress as we focus on his displayed nature. We're coming to Second Peter chapter 1 verse 3 according as his divine power he has given unto us how many things do you have now all things that pertain unto life and that pertain to godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us what has he called you to I said, what did he call you to? To sickness? To shame? Called us to oppression? Calls us to humiliation? We go to the office. Unbelievers are there. He has called us that those unbelievers will have dominion over us, will be their rag, and then they'll be cleaning their legs over our head. No. Get away from that place. Don't let anybody put their feet on your clean head, on your pure head, 
or your heavenly head. Now he has called us unto glory and to virtue, whereby are given unto us, tell me, exceeding great precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through laws now look at the displayed nature the demonstrated demonstrative nature and the declared nature of Christ that we now pursue and that is now demonstrated in our lives besides all this giving all diligence don't be lazy about it take it it belongs to you add to your faith we have the faith that will quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one and then virtue virtue if there be any virtue meditate and think on these things and then it talks about knowledge the knowledge of the Lord where Christ is now that is where you are he has lifted you up accept that knowledge and to knowledge temperance self-control self-control that means whatever is not your business remove your hand from there Whatever is going on, and the Lord has not given you the right to look into it, remove your hand. You don't comment on everything that goes on around you. You don't uh, participate in anything which should not be your Lord. And this body, the temple of God, whatever should not go in there, leave it alone. Temperance, the Lord will perfect it in your life and patience, perseverance, and godliness, the very character of God, and to godliness, brotherly kindness. Just be kind, be kind, like Christ will be kind, anywhere, everywhere, and to brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you, if these things be in you, as they were in Christ, and abound, and expand and remain they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful barrenness is taken away spiritually is taken away physically is taken away you will not be unfruitful anymore in the knowledge of our lord jesus christ as you go now, you go with the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. The knowledge that gives us victory. The knowledge that gives us dominion. The knowledge that translates into power in our lives. It will be done in Jesus' name. Let there be no doubt in your mind. We have the divine nature. And that divine nature will work in every life in Jesus' name. Acknowledge that divine nature in your heart. Aspire towards that divine nature, the development and the growth. Ask in prayer, accept, appropriate, move up, ascend, and advance. The time has now come. Everyone without exception we will activate that divine nature every time we meet any challenge in Jesus' name. You see anyone sick, activate that divine nature. You see any child depressed, having sorrow, activate that nature. Kindness will flow through you unto them. Love will flow through you unto them. You will possess the victory and you will spread the victory everywhere you go in Jesus' name. I got something. I said I got something. Rise up and acknowledge. Rise up and acknowledge the divine nature. It's yours. It's yours. 
accept it. Open your mouth and tell the Lord, Oh Lord, I thank you. Thank you for the revelation of your word in my life today. Acknowledge it. Don't say you are poor. Don't say you have nothing. Don't say you are sickly. Don't say you are sinful. Don't say you are weak. Don't say you are a rag. For everybody to be walking on, you have the divine nature. God dwells in you. The Spirit dwells in you. And the Lord Jesus Christ, when he said, if anyone opens the door, I will come in. It's there. And because it's there, you are not a loser, you are a winner. You are not weak, you are strong. You are not sick, you are well. You are not poor, you are provided for. He meets all the needs of your life. And then you can even spill it over to your neighbor, to your brother, to your sister, to the people around you. Activate that divine nature. You must acknowledge your habit before you can activate it. Ask, it shall be given unto you. Seek, to be given unto you, you'll find. And when you knock, the door will be open. Accept, God is who he says he is. I am what he says I am. I have what he says he has given me. I have what he says I have. He says I have the divine nature. Thank you, Lord, I have. He says I'm a partaker. Thank you, Lord, I am a possessor, a partaker. Accept, appropriate, with thanksgiving, appropriate, I have what he says I have. I can do what he says I can do. I possess what he says I possess. It's mine. And now let that divine nature work. Express it. Spread it. The faith. Express it. The virtue. Express it. The knowledge. Express it. The temperance. Express it. The godliness. Express it. The patience. Express it. The charity. Express it. You have it because it says you have it. And as you go through life, activate that divine nature and let the goodness of God flow through you to all people around you. You're victorious. You're an overcomer. You're more than a conqueror. In Jesus' name we pray. Anyone having the divine nature there? I said anyone having divine nature there? I pray it will be visibly demonstrated in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. Your weakness is gone. Sickness is gone. Doubt is gone. Unbelief is gone. I am strong. Let the weak say, the Lord confirm it in every life in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the revelation of what we have in Christ and what we have through the knowledge of Christ. We are partakers of the divine nature. And Lord, we pray the problems that defeated us in the past 
will no more defeat us from today in Jesus' name. We overcome sin. We overcome sickness. We overcome evil power. We overcome darkness. We overcome oppression. And we live in the activation of the divine nature in Jesus' name. Any of our brethren who are weak in faith will lift them up right now. I will pray, Lord, the energy of the Spirit and the power of the Spirit will penetrate into everyone right now in Jesus' name. Touch everyone miraculously. Transform everyone miraculously. And let the reality of this divine nature be demonstrated through the grace of God, through the power of the Holy Ghost, and through the name of Christ in Jesus' name. Help every one of us as your people to grow up in Jesus' name. We now are saint. We now advance and were seated in heavenly places together with the Lord Jesus Christ. Let victory follow everyone everywhere. The children of the conqueror will be more than conquerors in Jesus' name. On the road, keep your people. At home, keep your people. In the night, keep your people. Greater is he that is in each of us than anything, anyone in the world in Jesus' name. Let there be confirmation in every life. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. In Praise, amen. Glory be to God. Amen, amen. Let us sing, amen, and rejoice, amen. Glory be to God, amen, amen. Rejoice, amen. Glory be to God, amen. Let us sing, amen. Rejoice, amen. Glory be to God, amen, amen. Alas, indeed, my Savior bleed and did my sovereign die would he devote that sacred head for such a warm as i at the cross where i first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away it was there by faith i received my sight and now i am happy all the day at the cross oh yes of my heart rolled away it was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. at the cross, at the cross where I first saw the light. Rode away. In the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever, till 
shall find rest beyond the river in the cross in the cross be my glory ever till my rock in the cross shall find rest beyond the river. The way of the cross leads home. The way of the cross leads home. It is sweet to know as I onward go. The way of the cross Little, little. Little to know as I onward go the way of the cross, little the way of the cross leads home the way of the cross leads home it is sweet to know as i onward go the way of the cross leads home leads home Little, I have chosen the way, I have chosen the way, I have chosen the way. The way of Calvary. Have you chosen the way? I have chosen the way. Have you chosen the way? The way of Calvary. Are you in that number? Are you in that number? Are you in that number? Are you set by His grace? Are you in that number? Are you in that number? Are you in that number? Are you saved? by grace i am in that number i am in that number i am in that number i'm saved by his grace i am in that number i am in that number the number of the redeemed saved by his grace are you in that number are you in that number are you in that number saved by his grace are you in that number are you in that number are you in that number saved by his grace I am in that number, I'm saved by His grace. 
I am in that number. I am in that number. I am in that number. Saved by His grace. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. Old things have passed away. I'm born again. More than a conqueror. That's who I am. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. I'm a brand new man. Heaven came down. Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful day. Day I will never forget after I had wandered in darkness away. Jesus, my Savior, I met. Oh, what a tender, compassionate friend. He met the need of my heart. Shadows the spelling with joy, I am telling. He made all the darkness depart. Born of the Spirit with life from above. Into God's family divine. Justified fully through Calvary's law. Oh, what a standing is mine. And the transaction so quickly was made when as a sinner I came, took of the offer of grace he did proffer, he saved me. Oh, praise is their name. Now I have a hope that will surely endure after the passing of time. I have a future in heaven for sure, there in those mansions sublime. And it's because of that wonderful day when at the cross I believed. Riches eternal and blessings to Pana from his precious hand I received. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul when at the cross the Savior made me whole. My sins were washed away and my night was turned today. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul.
upon our hearts. Be with us, enlighten us, instruct us, teach us as we read together now. In Jesus' name, I pray. We'll continue with the reading now. Genesis chapter 38. And it came to pass at that time that Judah went down from his brethren and turned into a certain Adullamite whose name was Hira. And Judah saw there a daughter of a certain Canaanite whose name was Shua, and he took her and went in unto her, and she conceived, and bare a son, and he called his name Ur. And she conceived again and bare a son, and she called his name Onan. And she yet again conceived, and bare a son, and called his name Shelah. And he was at Kizib when she bare him. And Judah took a wife for Ur, his firstborn, whose name was Tamar. And Ur, Judah's firstborn, was wicked in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord slew him. And Judah said unto Onan, Go in unto thy brother's wife, and marry her, and raise up seed to thy brother. And Onan knew that the seed should not be his. And it came to pass, when he went in unto his brother's wife, that he spilled it on the ground, lest that he should give seed to his brother. And the thing which he did displeased the Lord, wherefore he slew him also. Then said Judah to Tamar his daughter-in-law, Remain a widow at thy father's house, till Shelah my son be grown. For he said, lest peradventure he die also, as his brethren did. And Tamar went and dwelt in her father's house. And in process of time, the daughter of Shua, Judah's wife, died. And Judah was comforted, and went up unto his sheep shearers to Timnath, he and his friend Hira the Adullamite. And it was told Tamar, saying, Behold, thy father-in-law goeth up to Timnath to shear his sheep. And she put her widow's garments off from her, and covered her with a veil, and wrapped herself, and sat in an open place which is by the way to Timnath. For she saw that Sheila was grown, and she was not given unto him to wife. When Judah saw her, he thought her to be an harlot, because she had covered her face. And he turned unto her by the way, and said, Go to, I pray thee, let me come in unto thee. For he knew not that she was his daughter-in-law. And she said, What wilt thou give me, that thou mayest come in unto me? And he said, I will send thee a kid from the flock. And she said, Wilt thou give me a pledge till thou send it? And he said, What pledge shall I give thee? And she said, Thy signet and thy bracelets and thy staff that is in thine hand. And he gave it her and came in unto her, and she conceived by him. And she arose and went away and laid by her veil from her and put on the garments of her widowhood. And Judah sent the kid by the hand of his friend the Adolamite to receive his pledge from the woman's hand. But he found her not. Then he asked the men of that place, saying, Where is the harlot that was openly by the wayside? And they said, There was no harlot in this place. And he returned to Judah and said, I cannot find her. And also the men of the place said that there was no harlot in this place. And Judah said, Let her take it to her, lest we be shamed. Behold, I sent this kid, and thou hast not found her. And it came to pass, about three months after, that it was told Judah, saying, Tamar, thy daughter-in-law, hath played the harlot, and also, behold, she is with child by whoredom. And Judah said, Bring her forth, and let her be burnt. When she was brought forth, she sent to her father-in-law, saying, By the man whose these are am I with child. And she said, Discern, I pray thee, whose are these, the signet and bracelets and star. And Judah acknowledged them, and said, she hath been more righteous than I, because that I gave her not to Sheila my son. And he knew her again no more. And it came to pass in the time of her travail that, behold, twins were in her womb. And it came to pass when she travailed that the one put out his hand, and the midwife took and bound upon his hand a scarlet thread, saying, This came out first. And it came to pass as he drew back his hand that, behold, his brother came out. And she said, How hast thou broken forth? This breach be upon thee. Therefore his name was called Pharez. And afterward came out his brother that had the scarlet thread upon his hand, and his name was called Zerah. You have just listened to the Bible reading 
and we need to take whatever we have learned to the Lord in prayer. Will you all rise up, please? Talk to the Lord in prayer. You've seen a commandment, a warning, an example, an instruction to obey, a promise to claim. Pray for grace that you will do as you have learned in the word of God. In Jesus' name, we pray. It's time to give our tithe and offering. Let's raise up.
administrations from nations across.